Yes, that's a very important issue. Always people come to our homes. And let me tell you something, let me warn you before. Whenever you allow somebody to enter your compound, and allow someone to enter your house, that person will learn, will study, will take many things that you have not told him. Because everything in your house talks loudly. And it defines who you are and, and what your home is. You don't need to tell me what you are when I, I reach your home. Just by visiting there, I know who you are and what you do and how you think. Therefore, our homes talk loudly than anything in life. Now, be very careful with your home. Yes. I can know much about your home, you without uttering any word, provided you allow me to enter your house. Did you hear me? Who believes with me? Oh, thank you very much. Okay. Now, the scripture you have read was talking about a man you know well. And I want to spend my time talking on that man. When you open Genesis chapter 18, verse 17 and 19, is our key text, which says, then God is said. Open your Bible, somebody, because I read Runyankore is an English. People here understand Runyankore is an English. Hmm. I'm handicapped because I don't know the language. I would speak like uh, Alex, the Ritiga. God is said, mark that word. Did you hear? Who said, my friends? I have not heard you. Who said? Hey. Hatuete Jesuitiana za gamba viona. Nebi gamba vya ruhanga. Tiri ya usaba. God is said. Ruhanga ya jile. Sometimes when we read our Bibles, we miss some important words in the Bible. The Bible is saying, then God is said. And think when this person I have employed you today, but he will get used to me. <laughs> Please, I'm the boss, I will pay. Please, so read the Bible. <laughs> Uh -huh, verse 17. Ah, Mukama. Yeah. Mukama ya Yebuza. Oh, that's what the Bible the Nyangole says. Yes. Ya Yebuza. Hey. Yes. But the English says, God is said. God did what? Said. Ah, Mukama ya Yebuza. Abraham kwara ere ari kiri hanga ruku e yaman. Ehe. When God comes, becomes your friend, you don't want to hide anything from you. I want to show you how God is friendly. God loves us to that extent. Now he's talking as one on one with his friend Abraham. Now the question he has is that now Abraham, I know he's going to become a mighty nation. He's going to have a great kindred. He has a great family. He's going to have children and grandchildren. And I know that will not end on him alone. But the entire world is going to be blessed from him. Now, a man like that, can I hide anything from him? They are talking one on who? I don't know now. Go back to your home. Have you reached there? You see, I thank God that has given us uh, 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 our thoughts move at a speed more than light years. 
because I know that now you have run at that speed and reached your home. Have you entered? Don't mind not putting the padlock or simply enter into your sitting room. Are you there? Pass out and go to your bedroom. Are you there? Now observe everything at your home. Some of you have seen you've gone and find that you left your wife there. Like my departmental. Who is sick? Have we reached there? Others, you left them at will. Others, so let's go to church and say that you're not to go. Others, you have told them, will you attend? Come here and say the no. There are somebody who left somebody there crying to come and refuse. Have you reached what is in your home? Observe everything. But God has a bigger plan than you have. He's planning to, plan to make you a great nation. Yes. He has given you children and those who don't have God is going to give you many people will be in your home and your family great nation and many people God won't be saved through your home are you there? now the question when we come to our home what do they see? it is our question last night we are talking about Hezahiah who was a king but now we are talking to two people, two families, two homes. We are going to start at two homes in comparison. Now, Abraham is going to become a large and strong nation. All the nations of the world are going to find themselves blessed through him. Now listen to verse 19. Yes, I have settled on him as the one to train his children and the future family to observe God's way of life. <laughs> Live kindly and generously and fairly so that God can complete in Abraham what he promised him. Nineteen. Nineteen. Yes. <laughs> Kamutora na I love that. Ajirata, ajirata. Abone kurajira, abanabe, na abumukaye, abari mukurata. Have you heard that? Okuguma, omuhanda guha, guamukama. Kandi abaguma omuhanda guamukama ne bakoraji. Ebiyo kuchirira, ne biyo buriyo. This time, just a minute. This time, see Mario, not a Mario. No, I'm coming back. Where are you? Where are you? Eh? Yesterday, I started learning somebody who had a Mario. But this one, they want to have Wurio. Uh huh. Go ahead. Eh? Where are you? Mukama abone kuretera Abraham ebiyo ya? Now, God has great plans for your life. And has great plans for your family. God is thinking of you even before you know it. But now, he has what he wants you to do. One is the way you regard your children. The way you are going to, to, to manage your family. The way you obey God. The way you will walk in the Lord or, or, or in the ways of the Lord. The way you are going to be righteous. The way you do obey God is one. So that God may fulfill all his promises. Now at this time, let me make this statement. Sometimes we fail to get God's promises. Sometimes we miss God's, uh, God's blessings. Just because we have failed to walk in God's commandments. Did we hear that? Now let's start comparing the two families I wanted to speak. Because I know Pastor will tell me to leave this place very soon. You make a decision every day. Have you ever minded what decision you make? You decided to come here. That's why you are here. You decide, I decide to put on this, this suit today. Yes, and I said the shoes I will put on. I decide that I will have breakfast. I decide that I will attend worship today. Those are decisions. What decision do you make in your life? 
I want to show you how decisions affect our families. That's what I want you to get today before we live here. Now it's between Abraham and a man called Lot. Yes, when you read Genesis chapter 13 now, starting from verse 5, let, let's start with verse 4, and we shall call on to verse uh, 18. Read. Uh -huh. mm. Yeah. I just want to bring this verse, not in part of what I'm presenting, but I'm going to show you that in this chapter, you find the Bible mentioning about Abraham twice building an altar and worshiping the Lord. From Sabbath, I told you that when you say to, Lord, to worship the Lord, you are losing all blessings of the Lord. That's why the church is calling you back at the family altar. That's why Jeremiah told us to stand in the way and look for the old ways and find the good road and walk in it. That's why we are here. Now, when you read this chapter, you find Abraham in all his movements, wherever he reached, the first thing he did was worship. Uh -huh. Did it help Abraham? Was it beneficial to him? What do I lose when I don't watch the Lord? Now listen. Verse 5 says, Now Lot, who was moving about with Abraham, also had flocks and herds and tents. Yes. These are two men who are rich. Pastor Alex has talked about richness and he has promised her to teach her to be worthy. How to be rich. Eh? I'm waiting because I want to be rich. You just avoid what the pastor says. Your pastor can speak something, some which are not true. Don't, fo don't follow him. But I want to be a rich man. Now, Lot and Abraham, the Bible mentioned that we are rich men. Therefore, I want to tell you first at the, at, at, at the beginning that wealth is not a sin. Uh -huh. And wealth will not prevent somebody to go to heaven. And there's no relation between uh, poor or weak spirituality with weak with words. Not at all. When I read my Bible, I find that most of the friends of God were rich men. But now I want to show you where the rich men who served the God and the rich men who do not serve God, where they part, where are the difference. Now the decision comes from the, 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 the difference comes from decision making. The Bible says Lot, Lot walked with Abraham. They moved wherever they went. I don't want to go into the background with Abraham, but he came from all all our way to to, to Haran or to Haran, and then now he is in Canaan. But all those days was moving with the Lord. He was a son before Abraham. He observed everything that Abraham was doing. And he followed it uh, strictly. Unfortunately, a time reached when they parted or they separated. Now verse 6 says, but the land could not support them while they stayed together. Oh. For their possessions were so great that we are not able to stay together. <laughs> Imagine you have, you have a son. You have a son. Uh, Pastor Alex told us he has a son. He used, he used to beat him. But I know that his son is also rich. Now, have you ever imagined becoming rich and your son is rich and you can't stay together? What amount of, what amount of wealth or possession is that that could separate people together? I want to remind you that Abraham was a hardest man. He used to, to keep animals, the cattle, the sheep, the camel, and many others. And they had greater hearts. Abraham 
became rich and Lot became rich. The Bible says that they could not live together. This is what the Bible says. So what happened? When you go ahead, you will find out the Bible saying in verse 7. What happened? When wealth increased, the Bible says that the quarreling arose between Abraham between Abraham's husband and Lot, the Canaanites and Perizzites were also living in the land at that time. Why did the Bible take a note to bring the quarreling between the herdsmen of Abraham and the herdsmen of Lot? Why did he bring the Pelezites and the Canaanites here at that side? Now let me use our current language that Abraham was a Christian. He could have been, you can say he was a church elder. Or just call him a pastor. And the Lord was also a church leader living together. Now in their camp, there was a lot of quarreling. When I was still young, I used to see, sorry for this, Pastor Alex, but let me speak it. I saw the many called the Bachiga. The first Bachiga I saw before I saw Alex. They used to work in our community. They are very hard workers. They work very hard in the morning and work in the evening. After working, now they go for drinking. Now after drinking, they move with a stick. Are they sticks? How do you call it? Enkoni. Sticks. A stick can be something small. Onkaba bakabi inenkoni zamani. And what I saw, these people are merciless. When they start fighting, it's real fight. <laughs> Although they are friends, they fight just peace, bloodshed. Ah. <laughs> Can you imagine now? Lot and Abraham's workers fighting in their homes. But the Bible says, but the Canaanites were there. And the they are unbelievers. It's unfortunate when in a Christian home, a family of a pastor, a family of a church leader, a family of a believer, when you start fighting, and you are fighting, and the Canaanites and the Perizzites are there. Now people get wondered and say, e, we thought that people knew God. They get accept Jesus as their personal savior. What is happening? You see, where is is something very great. Because we are fighting because of uh, the words that they have. When you read well the Bible, it will tell you they are fighting for the water to feed, uh, for their flocks to drink. Because those of Abraham want to feed Abraham's flock. And the Lord is wanted to feed Abraham. Now what happened? It's a fight. Now the Bible says, listen now here carefully, it's where I am going. When you read verse 8, so Abraham said to Lot, came oh, and called Abraham Ab 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 and said, Come, come. They went outside on a good hill. Oh, Abraham, and he said to Lot, Let's not have any quarreling between you and me, or between your herdsmen and mine. So we are close relatives. This is what this Bible says. Yeah. When Abay Shem start fighting, when the brethren when they start quarreling, sometimes in the church, sometimes at home, 
sometimes for just three four things. It could be money. Some people come and say, please borrow me your money. You give money and this one will not pay. The quarreling started. I've heard Pastor X narrating where what happens in the home. Those things he say he mentioned are not something simple. They will be really quarreling. But our prime he say it's not good that we quarrel. Because we are brothers. So Rabbi Ishemwe. Rabbi Ishemwe by Ishaka. Ishemwe by Ishaka. Stop quarreling. Mrechira. The Bible says it's not good. Nothing in the world should bring us to fight. But that's not what I am telling you. <laughs> but let me tell you what I want to tell you. Verse 9 says, Is not the whole land before you? Let, let's part a company. If you go to the left, I will go to the right. If you go to the right, I will go to the left. Yes, this is a very good man. This teaches us how Christian Abraham was. This indicates the spirituality of Abraham. When we talk about the spirituality of the home, when we talk about the spiritual life of your family, we are talking a life that will lead you to live a peaceful life. To live a very Christian life, which will be an example to all people that you live with. It's unfortunate if my, my home, if my, my marriage, if my children, if my work, if whatever I do cannot be an example of the Canaanites or of the unbeliever who is with us, let me tell you, we have brought God to shame when we fail to have a relationship in our homes. People who come in our homes fail to see God. They want to see Jesus. They are not coming to see you. They want to find out the secret of your success. But when they reach in our homes, they find something different. That's why it will to go back home and see how your home is. What is the relation between you and your wife? What is the relation between you and your children? What is the relation between you and your fellow believers? Now, what is the relation between you and the community members? There are people who live in the community and will never greet even the neighbors. Especially you who live in towns. Eh? You are in this musical. Another one, this one, you don't know who lives here. How are you really representing Jesus in where you live? Now, there's something we learned from Abraham. Now, listen to decision making. This is what brought me in this chapter. Verse 10 says, Lord looked around and saw that the whole plain of Jordan toward the wall was well watered. Like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. This is a very important verse in this chapter. Talks about decision making. Now let me tell you something. My younger people are here. You have your seniors that you live with. The senior could be a parent, could be a dad or a mom. The senior could be somebody, a church elder or a church leader. Now, sometimes when they come to you with a word of counsel, younger men, younger women, sometimes use your mind without thinking. This is what the Lord did. Abraham told him, my son, you don't need to quarrel. The land is big. When you take left, I'll take right. When you go south, I'll go north. Make a decision. Decide what to do. Let's separate. We have lived together enough. Now, let me ask you, if Lot was a, a, a wise man, what would he have done? 
You see, when you read uh, the geography of this place, you will find that there were mountains, there was mountains, and there was a plain. That's what he read. That he looked at the plain of Zoar, which was like the Garden of Eden. You see? Now, what did he do? Verse 11. Uh -huh. Are you following me? Verse 11. So Lord chose for himself the whole plain of the Jordan and set out toward the east. The two men parted a company. Yeah. Now, that's where there is a great, great and important lesson you to learn from this summer. Lord, did the what? Remind me. I see you are starting sleeping. Make a decision. And he looked at the plain, which was like the garden of God. And they parted. Yeah, he said, bye-bye, Abraham. I have lived with you, with you enough. Thank you for taking care of me. Thank you for teaching me business. Thank you for doing everything. Oh, it has been a long journey from Uli to Haran, then to Hebron. Bye. He went with his flock. Lord of servants, his wife, children. The Bible does not mention about grandchildren. I don't know whether at this particular time, Lord had had grandchildren. Because of time, let's let's hurry. Yes. Now, when you you continue. Abraham lived in the land of Canaan while lived, Lot lived among the cities of the plain and pitched his tent near Sodom. Are you following? We are talking about decision making. We are talking about what people see when they visit us in our homes. Yes, he looked at the plains, but very soon he left even the plain and entered the cities. Slowly, slowly. Slowly, slowly, he's out to hurry. He found himself in the city. Many people have cities. Younger men who are here, I have seen younger men from Vishen selling their lands and come to Kampala and buy Boda Boda and start enjoying the sterile. Yes, you go to Kampala, you will find many places just packed by Runyankore. But I know where Bafumbira is. I don't know where Banyankore is most. When you go to Kampala, there is Kifumbira and Kamocha. You will find the Batoro in the in the in the Namuongo. You will find the many many many. Do you know where the Banyankore are concentrated? Where? They are also in Kamocha. Yeah, you are in Intinda because you have this. Intinda is a, is a place of people who have money. But, but I'm talking to those who sell their property and go to enjoy the very of Kampala. <laughs> are you following? Now listen what happened. The Bible says that's hurry. We don't have time and we have much to read. Now the people of Sodom were wicked and we are sinning greatly against the Lord. Now this is the definition of the home now Lord has chosen to put his tent. Now, now, let's reflect now. Let's go back and reflect on what we have read. The question is, why did the Lord separate with Abraham? Was Abraham a bad man? Did he mistreat him? Did he have find any problem with Abraham? What caused the separation? I want to hear from you. Somebody? Obutunji. Yeah, Thank you so much. If I had the man, I would give you a gift. Obutunji. You see, 
my 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 people most of us seated here are driven by obutunji and the most thing on minds of many Christians is obutunji we may talk about Jesus many times that people will not hear but when you start talking about money people will wake up and start listening but today I want to introduce something bigger than Obutunji. Yes, Obutunji is very good. And we are going to, Alex is going to talk about Obutunji. And I will talk about Obutunji too. Because that's why you came here. But there is something greater than Obutunji. And the something greater than Obutunji is the spiritual life. Your relationship with God. The friendship you have with God. That spirit that forces you to make a decision to follow God, regardless of who you are and where you live. Most people have found the money in exchange of their spirituality. My friend, the end is that will not be good for you. Just listen. Verse 14, the Lord said to Abraham after Lot had departed from him, Look around from where you are to the north and the south, to the east and the west. Listen very carefully to this verse. Who is saying? The Lord is talking to who? Let me tell you something that will surprise you if you have never followed it, my friend, who are Bible scholars. After Lot had separated with Abraham, why did Abraham suggest he separated? He wanted to have peace of mind in his home where there is no quarreling. A home which is really serving God without quarrels, without anxiety, without stress. Now, after the Lord had gone, now the Lord came. I wonder why did not God come before Lord went? And there is another surprise I have seen. You help me. I never saw the Lord again also following the Lord where he went and he told him anything. Are you following me? But now after Lord had gone, the Lord came to Abraham. Now he's giving him a command. Stand here on that mount where I was left. You see, the younger man is in the plain. Now the old man is in the mountain. I didn't know the danger of mountains until I visited Kasese. Those people from Kasese are very strong men. They live in those mountains. They are very difficult to climb. But Abraham decided to live in the mountain and live with his son, take the plane that he had decided. Had she come to Tunga when the plane is in Where do you put your farms mostly? On Sosin in home plains. Eh? Plains. Now you can imagine a younger man choosing planes over the mountain and sending the old man in the mountains. But when the Lord came to Abraham, listen what he told him. This is what the Bible says. I don't want to speak my own words. The Lord said to Abraham after Lord had departed from him, look around. Now listen to how he, he mentioned to the north and the south, to the east and the west. Now I, let me ask you a question. Now he's taking to look where now has God left Lot? Because when they are choosing, he said, when you take the west, I will take the east. When you go to the north, I will go to the south. And inside the plains. And now the Lord is here giving all the land to Abraham. Verse 15. And the land that you see I will give to you and your offspring 
forever. Have we ever thought? Are you listening to me? That the wealth and the possession of the Lord ended when he separated with Abraham. Let me show the first thing. The land was given to Abraham. North, south, east, west. Who is declaring? God, that I'm going to give you all of that. Now what is left with the Lord? Can you answer here? Can you say nothing? Are you there? I'm not, done, I'm not yet done with you. Now let's go to verse 16. I will make you offspring like the dust of the earth. So that if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Is that, is that not what we desire? Is there, is there anyone among you who has produced children that you don't want to see their post prosperity? Are you here? What did you wish for your children? What do you feel when you are child has become a doctor. No, when has so finished university. university. When she's married, they all have married. Akashwere, when Akashwere. produces his grandchildren and many Akashwere. others. Akashwere. This is what God is telling Abraham. Akashwere. But let me surprise with something. Akashwere. God is promising Abraham Akashwere. for children who is equal to the dust. But at this time he had he had no even one. <laughs> but Lord had the children. Lord had what? He was producing in the family of Abraham. Children. But Abraham don't have a what? But Abraham have stuck at God and worshiping God. Following him in heaven. And the Lord can declare that Abraham obeyed my voice. And followed my commandment. But you never hear God talking about love. Let me tell you my friend. Before you die. You must live a legacy. What will people remember from you when you die? What if you die today? Who would talk about you? And what would people say about you? Have you ever imagined your funeral service? Yes. Stephen Covey said that we should begin with the end in mind at the beginning. Before you leave, before you leave, before you start leaving, before you start leaving, I'm sorry. Hey, start with in mind what you'd like people to talk about you on your funeral service. Yes. Now, if you die today, would people? How many minutes would people spend on your funeral service? I have been, I have attended several funeral services, several burials, and what I have seen, you have a very wonderful culture where you talk and you talk about the dead people. Every person has something to talk about you. Now imagine what would they talk about? You? Would the church member of Ishaka come and want to talk something to you? Or they bring you from the house up to the grave? And that is not that is not very important. There's something bigger. What can God talk about you after your death? Go walk through the lengths and breeds of the land, for I am giving it to you. And lastly. You can read 17 and 18. So Abraham went to live near the great trees of Mamuli at Hebron, where he picked his tent. There he built an altar to the Lord. Abraham Hebron, 
Now let me summarize what I am saying, though I'm still holding a whole chapter. When you go to chapter 19, no, no, no. When you start this chapter 18, we are studying. Oh, no, we have been in 13, now we go to chapter 18. Sorry. <laughs> you find Abraham now seated at his home at Mamul. Under those mivule trees where he used to rest. It was a time like this. Because the Bible says that it was too hot in that day. Then he saw three men moving into his house. They seem to be moving and going somewhere. When those people came, Abraham stood up and ran to welcome them. Are you hearing me? I know you know this, but listen. When he welcomed them, he brought them, just gave them a seat. The Bible says he just set them outside under the tree. Yes. Yeah. God appeared to Abraham at the ox of Mamre while he was eh, while at the entrance of his tent. It was the hottest part of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing. He ran from his tent to greet them and bowed before them. Are you telling me the time is over? Power. Okay, power. Okay, it is back. Now, he ran to welcome them. Some people have visited at their home, they don't welcome you. I don't know whether I welcome people. Especially, let me talk to these you great men who are seated here. A man like Alex Suizo Mutiga. Can you run to welcome your visitors? Or you just welcome them when they arrived here? But they are standing there. I said, why are they standing there? He ran. And yeah, said, please, yeah, 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 yeah. you can come and rest here. And the Bible says it was too hot. Yes. But when you read the verse, it says, I'll get some water so you can wash your feet. Rest and this, uh, under this tree. I'll get some food to refresh you on your way. Since uh, your travel have brought you across my path, they say, they certainly go and Go ahead and do that. I love this. When you, you read thoroughly well the scripture, it seems as these visitors, Abraham had observed them as they are just passing by. It, as if they were not directly coming to his home. It could be that they did that to test who Abraham was and how his home was. But when he welcomed them, they came and sat down. He suggested water to wash the feet. They accepted, they not deny. He suggested to, to prepare some meals and they accepted. Now at my wonder, is that he went into the flock and he brought there a calf. Yes. Can you get a goat? How many people have eaten goats in your home? They must be special guests. Is that okay? But this shows what people see in the home. There are so many people who visitors go hungry. What are the food is there? Aba mama, Murio? People come into your home and go hungry, but the food is there. Let your husband's not here, you are still waiting for him. But let's, let's summarize this. When you see these visitors who came, when they were eating, it's now when we know that they were really guests in Abraham's house. When you read, I think it's verse 19, it asks a question. Then the men say to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? He said, in the tent. 
Now imagine since the, the guests arrived and he gave them who is bringing in our water to wash the feet Abraham uh -huh. who went to tell the men to prepare the lamb who is going in the tent to tell Sarah to cook how long does this take to prepare a cup, cook it, bring it to eat? How many hours are those? But the guests don't know where Sarah is. Have you? Have you started thinking about that? But there's something that will amaze you. <laughs> Up to this time, Sarah is cooking, is doing anything, but she has not greeted the have visitors. <laughs> and they're eating and enjoying, <laughs> but they're in the home, <laughs> under the tree. <laughs> you listen what the Bible says. <laughs> One of them said, one of them said, I am coming back about this time next year. When I arrive, your wife Sarah will have a son. Your wife Sarah will have a what? A son. Whose guests are these? Whose guest were this? Who welcomed them? Whom are they asking where she is? What had happened? Maybe she was at work in the town. Maybe she was very far. But now listen the following verse. It says. At this time, I'll come back. Now, when you read the following phrase, Sarah was listening at the tent opening, just behind the man. I wonder how the Bible was written. She was all along listening in the tent, just behind the men where they are sitting. So Maji, no we come. Ah, all along she is there. <laughs> eh, there a conversation between Abraham and the guest Sarah. Is but now when he touched on Sarah, <laughs> when it came the point now when Sarah is coming in. Now she laughed. <laughs> you see, when we talk about homes and houses, we may take it very simple. But let me tell you, my friend, there are several things that happen in our home. There are several things that happen in our house. It is your house that show your Christianity. If you fail to show a Christianity in your home, you will never show it in the church. The problem that many people want to show in the church is that they are Christians. One time I went in the camp meeting at a certain place. I will not tell you the place, but I was a main speaker too. Well, I've talked in many camp meetings. Now, this camp meeting, the pastor's house was very near, but was still a very small house. And uh, the church was in between the, 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 the pastor's house and one of the good, the wealthiest church elder in that area. And has a very big and good house there. In fact, I call it a mansion. Now, when we arrived, we are two, but we came late. And sometimes the pastors we are caught here and there, and you arrive at the place we are going to talk very late. Now, when you reach it, 
this pastor was still young. I said, now, pastor, you are not going to sleep here. You still have one bedroom, and the rest is a sitting room. And I feel bad to put you sleep here in the sitting room. But I have requested the church elder they are not very far to go and sleep there. That is okay. Now we went with the pastor. It was a dog that welcomed us. <laughs> now even our host feared. Now to knock and enter. Lastly, the man came out. Started to your dog, please keep quiet. Leave the guests to come. We came, he led us all back into the boys' quarter down there. Said, Now you sleep there. When you want to take showers, you go there until morning. Sorry, you came late. We accepted that you come late. Then we slept there. In the morning, it was a Sabbath. We went to church. By the time we arrived there, the wife of the elder was singing very hard, leading the Sabbath school. Everything, everything. But good enough, I was a guest in the place. I never knew them. And then somebody told me, hey, the one singing and leading Sabbath school is the wife to the elder. I said, hey, that's very good. Now I have my own way, and you will accept it. I told my my pastor that pastor I'm not going back there. No, I will sleep here and you are sitting room with you. Don't mind. This is my my sleeping. I accept it. I slept here. I never went back there. The entire camp meeting. Now let me tell you something. When Sunday came, you see. I'm telling you, like here, <laughs> not even that road. <laughs> when other people were coming to the camp meeting, <laughs> it had rained. The wife to the church head <laughs> just went, pulled up her hoy, <laughs> and started <laughs> planting beans there. <laughs> All who are coming, she was telling them, but you have time. <laughs> the rain have come, <laughs> and you are going to <laughs> camp <laughs> meeting. <laughs> Now, when others will have it in beans, you will be saying we are in the camp meeting. Did you hear me? To my amazement, on Wednesday, the company selling is soya. Came. Starting talking to soya, soya. That's when I saw her entering the church. And when the program for Soya was done, she disappeared. Yes, in the come meeting, to promote Soya at the come meeting site. When they came, she came to listen to the Soya people. When they were done, she disappeared. She disappeared. Are you following me? Now, very hard on the last Sabbath, she was conducting the scene ah, and making everything. Let me tell you, my friend, that is not Christianity. Did you hear me? That's just of showing you what's the what are we learning here? The family of Abraham is a great lesson to how we treat our families. Most of you husbands have failed to instill Christianity in your home. Your wives are dying spiritually. Your children are dying spiritually. And where women are spiritual, the husbands are dying. He taught it. Some yeah, husbands yeah. don't want to listen to their wives. When your wife is telling you or is leading you to Christ, you are just fighting. 
How will you be a home that represents Christ? Let me wind up like this. Because I know we are tired. I have preached for two hours. But I told you my hour is doubled. Don't forget that. Now let me tell you what happened. After when now Salah left that's when Abraham knew his guests. Because one of the key guests asked Abraham, why is your wife laughing? Now the wife de started to defend herself. I have not laughed. But I have not laughed. And even the Bible says she was lying. But the guests never said, but you laughed. But the Bible says she was lying. But the guests never said, but you laughed. But you laughed. Now he asked, is there anything difficult to the Lord? That's when Abraham knew that Abraham the guest was the Lord visiting him. The angels of God come into our homes every time. But unfortunately, we miss them. Because the way we live in our homes. I don't know my friend who have come in this camp meeting. I don't know the level of the spiritual life of your home. I don't know the level of spirituality of your family. I don't know whether there is still an altar. Whether you watch to the Lord. Whether you see the Bible. Whether you read it or not. Whether there is prayer. I don't know what time you devote to God. But let me tell you, it affects your life. So I have preached a long sermon. But let me summarize. When the men had declared their purpose of visiting Abraham, Abraham had prayed for a long time, now 100 years old. And Sarah was 90. He had, she had the reason to laugh. But God is there to tell her that regardless of your age, regardless of your home, when God makes a decision for you, nothing will handle it. Let me tell you, my friend, you are very sure to trust God. But I'm here to tell you that you need to trust God. They left and went. Then this is where our key text comes in. Where God says, but Abraham is a friend. And we have ordained him to be a strong family. That will bless the entire world. Can I hide him what I'm going to do? Oh, where? what was the Lord going to do? The Lord was going to visit another family. And this is a second family from Abraham's family. And this was the family of Lot. Now, from the time Lot separated from the Lord, from Abraham, now this is the only time the Lord is planning to go and visit this home. And he's saying, I want to see what is happening where Lot lives. You read that chapter with five. And they went. But the Bible says the Lord did not go at Sodom. It's the angels, two angels. Here at Abraham, there are three men. But at Lot's home, reached the two what? You know what happened to Lot's home. That's not the purpose of my preaching today. But I want to show you something that you need to take as a gift from Lot's home. Now explain. <laughs> Yeah, did you hear that? Uh huh, go ahead. I wish I knew. But listen, now it is two angels who are loved in Ruth's home. The Lord went back at heaven. He had finished his mission in the family of his friend Abraham. Why? Let me tell you. Go read your Bible. From the day Lord separated with Abraham, I have failed to find a text saying that. A lot build an altar. When you find it, help me. I have not seen that. The worship ended 
when the Lord was seeing Abraham the home, their parents were here. You make a fall up of your children when they are mature. Yes, you have made you have money, you have cows, you have given him his own home or her own home. But you do follow them to know whether they worship where they have gone. From hence, he never worshiped again. The Bible says he just shifted his stand slowly, slowly, and he put it, he pitched it in, in Sodom. And the Bible says that the people of Sodom were evil. Now I want to tell you that the evil in Sodom also entered in the Lord's family. Although he had a Christian background, he still knew God, but worship has, had evaporated. There was no worship in Lord's home. And the Lord told Abraham, I think let me see this verse and read it. Ah, let me see where it is. Sorry, so I don't know whether you should read it. But when you read, ah, you will follow it. It is said that you went to see what is happening in Sodom. Ah, the cry of Sodom has reached heaven. I have come to see whether what I hear in heaven is really what is happening there. Mm -hmm. Now you all know what happened in Sodom. You remember what happened in Lord's home? What happened? When the angels arrived in Sodom, he welcomed them. That was good because they had already got that, that, that habit from Abraham. Welcomed them, took them at his home. But at night, what happened? The entire city came, knocked at the house. Open, open, open. Would you like to live in such a city? I said, you want to know. In fact, the, the right word is want to sleep with the visitors who have come into our home. Yes, now these are the city people. We want. Now listen, to Lord. Lord is offering her, his daughters. May let me give you my daughters to do them as you want. And the answer, we are tired of them. We want men. We want what? It's unfortunate when our homes deteriorate to that level. Friends who are here in this community, mind about your family. Mind about your home. Mind about your spouse. Mind about your children. Mind about people who live in your home. Do they really reflect the character of God in your home? Can people fear to invade your home because they know that that's a Christian home. Don't go to pray with that home. Lord had sunk too low that the entire city could not even fear to invade his home at night. Just because he has got visitors, they want to sleep with them. You see, people are crying with the Siaga this time, but the Siaga came long ago. Now I want to reach on the last and what I wanted to tell you. I, I, I want to compare. We, we waste most of our time in, in Wales. And it's good, but now listen. Before it is done, it was done. Before morning, the angels told the Lord, you have other children in this day who are not in this house. Do you have your son in laws and your daughter in laws? You have other relatives that came with you when you came from Abraham, ran out and tell them to escape the city because we are destroying it before dawn. And the man he ran, did he have them? The Bible says he ran from house to house. Until he came back, I went his dawning with no one. Now the command came from heaven get out from this house. This is not a place to honor God. Get out of this house with your wife and your daughters. 
and don't take anything. But the Bible says he delayed packing this and that until when because the, the, the commands of heaven are commands it was that before the sun comes or dawns Sodom must be destroyed until the angels were forced to, to hold the right hand of Lot and the right of the wife and another one the children and just it when we them to take them out of the city now let me ask a question. How much did the road go out with it from the city? That's my big question to you now. Where is that made them? Did you follow me well? Hati ni mbabuza Mabareka ba kwa tomu kono kwa roti No kwa mkazi ya ba na Bakabat Now the angels that Grabbing this one is hand and this one is hand and They are taking them out How much Did they go out with In a cow In a donkey In a sheep In a mattress In a shoe What you waste your money where do you waste your money? What is preventing you from this be attending this kind of meeting? Lord was still living. But he went empty handed. Only the shirt, maybe if it was a shirt and the trouser. That was all. And he went. In some very few minutes, everything was consumed with fire. Now, this is where the devil has blinded our eyes and failed to know that the world we live in, the world of sin. Making money is not a problem. But if you want money, we will end you like a lot. You are rotting before the time comes. Have you had that? And let me tell you the unfortunate thing. Even the wife did not reach, did not reach where she was going. You think she was a Christian? You think she was still a worshiper? Don't you think that her turning into a pillar of salt it was a symbol that he had died long ago. I don't know whether you, my sister, my brother who's watching me, you're still living or if you died long ago. We are seeing a person attending a church every time. You may be pastor, you may be leader, you may be deacon, you may be a church leader, you may be singer, you may be what? But are you still living? Or you are a walking dead body? This is what happened to this family. Now we are comparing our families. Whether our families are still spiritual families. Think about your family. I don't know where you live. I don't know what happens to your family. But you know. Because you cannot hide your heart. Don't you know? But let me tell you, most important, there is God who knows you thoroughly well. You see, when the Lord told Abraham, we have come to see what happens. He didn't know. He knew everything. Abraham, my friend, was thinking that his son is still a Christian. That's why he had evoked up to 10. Somebody cultured the 10, and the 10, two daughters, two son in laws, two daughters in the home, a lot and wife. That's the number of 10. But we are not here. May God bless you as you leave this worship and think what is happening in your home. If people visited your house, what are they seeing in it?
Would you like it to commit your home and your your house, your life, your wife, your children into God's hands? Let me see those who would like to commit them. Now, if you happen to come here with your wife, please come with her here. Don't mind it is shiny, but come. If you happen to come with a wife, come. Anybody who came with a wife? And I say, hand, a shovel hand. Hey, why don't you seize her hand and come here? Yes. This is a command from the preacher. Yes. Hey. Please come with us. Just hold her hand and come with her. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, my pastor. You are a good example. Wonderful. How it looks beautiful. Hey, hey. Thank you. Thank you very much. You see, now I have always a chance of learning you. Wonderful. 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 Don't come without holding the hand of your wife. Don't wait for angels to hold her hand. You hold her hand and bring her here. Anga, you will go. Why? 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 Okay, good, good, good. You coming alone? Where is your wife? She's here before you. Man, younger man, hold her hand. Don't leave her. Now, thank you for coming. Now you are an example of this. Yes, come and hold him. Achai Bey, come and hold him. Pick him from the pulpit and take her down. You come with her. Or oh, she picks you up the pulpit. Good. Now, my friend, yeah. you have set a right example. You see, let me tell you, my friend, there are some things that we pray with. When you come to the camp meeting and leave your wife home, you cannot go and teach her everything you have had here. That's why it is very important. First thing when you plan to come into the camp meeting, plan to come with your wife and plan to come with your husband. Thank you very much. Can you turn there and wait for that congregation? Vajirenti orundi muizena bakazwa ni ba shikaba. Okay, thank you. Come back. Now, no, no, no. Don't go back. Are you just extend here? Na zakuwe tabani. Extend here. Mira, mira, mira. Aye nani? Now all those people who are married people, but you came alone. You come here and you join this prayer. You are married, but you didn't bring your husband or your wife. Please come here. Come here. Join this group. You are part of it, but I want to tell you that you are missing a lot. <laughs> You are missing a lot. <laughs> the Lord would have talked to your husband or to your wife without you, but now don't mind. Keep quiet. We are still in worship. Yes. Come, come, come. All married people who are here, please come here. Married. Please come. Just don't fear. COVID went. You can come closer. Because we still have other people. We are going to Now my married people who have left out your spouse. Now I called here because I want to give you a command. Unless if you are, your wife or your husband is abroad. But if you live with your wife or your husband at home. Please come in the evening with her. Hey, good enough. I have moved the whole district. I know you come from near. Even now, you can go and pick her and bring her. Let me tell you those businesses you are keeping, where you don't want your wife to live and come here and listen to the word of God, you may lose it. And I don't want to tell you I've seen it. Oh, you live in the village. For us who live in Kampala, we have seen it. When COVID came, everything collapsed. 
corrupt completely. And there are those people who will never come in the business again. But it was God who kept you. Because he showed us his strength that there is no country which is powerful than God. So learn to trust God. Our being here is to learn to trust God. Is to come closer to him. As much as we are guarding our businesses. Yes, I am a business person and I will talk about business. But the business has its place. Don't put your business in the place of God. And even your house. Some of you don't want to bring your house because they are keeping you home. But they can come and steal those things even when you are there. But God can keep your house in your house. Am I right? Yes. Now it's good we come and share. Sister, you need to come meet me. We need to put a focus on our family. Thank you for coming. Now I want to pray for you because it is a home that has the greatest challenge. Last time I told you everything is made from the home. If the home fails, then the church has failed. Because every person that comes, the church comes from the home. Let's pray. Pastor Alex, the next prayer will come here and pray for these people. But now let me pray for this one. Yes. Kind Lord and Father, I want to thank you for your people. The people standing in this sunshine that you took and never had the heat and visited Abraham with a good message of appreciating his Christianity when you gave him a child, through Sarah. I want you to visit these people. You know their homes. You know their families. You know what they are going through. You know the successes and the challenges that every home is going through. Bless your people, God. Give them power. Give them strength. Bless whatever they are doing. It's my humble prayer that you talk with everyone internally in the heart. These people believed you, accepted you, and they were baptized. Now, make them grow spiritually and become very strong. If there's anyone who is going under challenges, kind Lord and Father, this is at home. Not to judge them, but help them to overcome all the challenges. You pronounce in Abraham's home that nothing is difficult for you. You know their prayers and their wishes. Kind, loving Father, go and abide in their home. Take over. Be the ruler and the guide. Manage everything to glorify your name. Thank you for your heart our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Now before this one goes back, is it too hot to you? Let me request all of you to stand. You can move slowly and join this group as Pastor Alex is committing us into our hands. Pass here, Pastor Alex. This is too long. Come here and commit this congregation. Yes, they are not married, but these all these people, you know them. That they are going to come from homes. We don't have we don't need to have any other home that will be similar like a lot of home. We need an altar in every home. Pray for them. Kurasha batatu wo mwiguru ngo ebitutire turakora ebitahikire ico wikirize ngo tubase kubaho no kwikira izoba ijo mwanyo gukuramya mweno yikirize ruhanga atatu wo mwiguru ahanyuma yo kumara kwega no kwegetsibwa no kwijukibusibwa ibyahandi cyo byakwatari Abraham na Roti wikirize tatitu ubushobozi bwona bitugarura busya Tutewe nika nisekuru nji o makaga itu Ahamiri moye itu Ahitu lalawa na hitu atora Ahitu mura bitura gamba ni bitura kora 
Kuhile mkumu chisha wa misho gawe Mchilizo mchisho guwa hile Abrahamu no mchala we sara Ugutuereze ikarohanga wichu Uwewale na angwa no kukumiza mu Oka kwatiri la roti Kandi rohanga tatu wa mwiguru Oka hika hakumu ya mwini sodoma Akale mwa kwele chirela Uchilizo na itwe abachari sodoma na gumora Otukwate hamukono Otuhe mwini sodoma Otugarule omwanyo gushe mire kando guichire Eronye nsatu teka tetele kwa magaraga tawa ho Mbawa zita unukunda kwa obdonjere kuwa liko tuwe na Abenjo mwanyo kwa washeja na wakazi Habana batone mpangale Abashenja wina wakazi na watavine Abakazi wina washeja na watavine Abashuigwe na watakashuigwe Uichize tuwe na Otubalire hamwenka ruhanga wetu Wengi itahadja wa rohanga wa itabisha na wakazi wabo Akeisha na wantu wabo Na ito tuke itahadja wa Kukwendi murundi kuturawe tuli shomisho gawe Nisha mutuli evi hanjirgue, evi hulire Kande vichire, evi teka techirgue ama garagata hao Mwebali mnonga hapo mwere isa oitu Uwabasa kukwebe mbera Uwabasa kukugura Uwabasa kutishusia E chigani ilo, e chami ilo mukaya Abrahamu Kili za chichendu mmakagaitu Kukunda kwa wenemba waziza Wabijonjele kukuli indira anu Amakagaitu galini kweche nkuku ya agamba Mamalika wa galinde Kristo utu la galukeyo Kwa shanga bjona Wabiju kufinja hamwene yuhole yuhole Indama umuritu kwena wali hanu Ya mwala nemi hichirizi Kwa mwizine lirunjele gata chaitwe Nelgo mwana Nelgo mwere kwa Amen God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.